The space plane is back after nearly two decades of dedicated research and development. Dream Chaser is poised to leave its first mark on the space race. When the space shuttle Atlantis completed its final mission in 2011, it marked the end of an era. While the program had become too complex and costly to sustain, its retirement left a significant gap in humanity's ability to perform critical work in low Earth orbit. The shuttle's unique capability to return payloads gently to Earth was unmatched, allowing sensitive experiments to be quickly accessed by researchers just hours after landing on a runway. For 30 years, this system reliably supported science and innovation, but its retirement deprived researchers of this crucial service. Although SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft is currently the best option for such missions, the process of returning Dragon to NASA's headquarters often slows down the handling of scientific research. SpaceX has improved the timeline by incorporating helicopter transportation, but it still can't match the efficiency of the space shuttle. Since SpaceX no longer pursues targeted propulsive landings with its Dragon spacecraft, another company must step up to meet the challenges of a truly rapid payload return. Coincidentally, this is exactly what Sierra Nevada Corporation hopes to achieve with their Dream Chaser spacecraft. Dream Chaser is a wing-lifting body spacecraft capable of landing on any runway in the world that's at least 10,000 feet long. After the shuttle was retired, Dream Chaser became the only spacecraft currently funded by NASA with atmospheric maneuverability. After more than a decade of research and development, Dream Chaser is finally scheduled for its first flight, no earlier than May next year. While slightly delayed compared to the company's earlier statements, the flight remains one of the most highly anticipated by the space enthusiast community. The first flight of Dream Chaser will feature the spacecraft named Tenacity, accompanied by an attached cargo module known as Shooting Star. It's set to deliver 122,000 pounds, roughly equivalent to the weight of two Ford F-150s, to the International Space Station. The cargo could include anything from food, water, and supplies for astronauts to scientific equipment and spare parts for the station. Without the need to accommodate a crew, most of the available space inside Tenacity is freed up for a carefully packed cargo, and this version of the spacecraft lacks windows. Angie Jackman, Senior Vice President of Safety and Mission Assurance at Sierra Space, states that most cargo loading will begin 30 days before launch. However, NASA's contract requires that live cargo, cold storage bags, and other temperature-sensitive equipment be loaded up to 48 hours before launch. Our team likes to refer to it as professional Tetris, she said. At their Louisville facility, they not only train their crew how to load and unload the vehicle, but also bring astronaut crews into their facility to learn how to receive the vehicle, open the hatch, and load and unload the cargo while it is berthed at the ISS. The process to unload and reload to Nasty will take roughly 35 to 75 days, with daily crew time allotted to the process being limited. The ISS crew will also load items meant to be destroyed onto Shooting Star, which will not make the return trip to Earth after Tenacity detaches from the ISS and begins its deorbit burn. The cargo module will detach from Tenacity and burn up on Reentry along with its contents. So how will the space plane reach and connect to the International Space Station? After Tenacity and Shooting Star complete their final environmental testing at NASA's Armstrong facility, the spacecraft will be shipped to Kennedy Space Center to start loading and prepping for launch. Tenacity is hitching its ride to low Earth orbit, packed inside a 5-meter payload fairing of Ula's Vulcan rocket. While Sierra Space says Dream Chaser is capable of landing on large commercial runways, NASA requested Tenacity to land at the shuttle landing facility at Kennedy Space Center to allow crews to retrieve cargo hardware and sensitive science experiments more quickly. According to Matt Clark, Chief Brand Officer and Senior Vice President of Marketing for Sierra Space, Florida is the ideal place for these missions. By landing in Florida, we can remove the cargo and access it very quickly, in contrast to solutions that we've got around us today. We're not landing in an ocean. It doesn't take a massive amount of time for us to access it, he said. This efficiency is further enhanced by the thousands of proprietary foam-like thermal tiles that cover Dream Taser. These tiles allow the spacecraft to cool off quickly after landing, making unloading time-sensitive cargo more efficient.
While we can get up to three thousand degrees on re-entry within thirty minutes, tenacity has cooled off enough that we can approach the vehicle and get all the cargo and hardware out of it," Clark said. But this is just the beginning of what Dream Chaser is capable of achieving. Meanwhile, Sierra Space is already working on its second cargo spacecraft, Reverence, also known as DC-102, which will likely take another eighteen months to complete. In addition to its cargo fleet. Sierra Space is also developing a crewed variant of the spacecraft labeled as the DC-200 series and a national security variant known as the DC-300. This demonstrates the significant demand for this versatile spacecraft. Dream Chaser stands out for its flexibility, capacity, reusability, habitability, and versatility. Capable of landing on standard runways, it avoids the need for highly toxic fuels or specialized infrastructure. Its cargo capacity exceeds that of other spacecraft in NASA's commercial resupply program, and it can bring back two tons of cargo, including fragile science experiments. The spacecraft's reusability allows it to be used up to 15 times, reducing costs. Furthermore, its design can accommodate crewed missions with minimal modifications. Including environmental controls and life support systems, Dream Chaser is a bridge between space exploration's Cold War heritage and the next frontier. As it prepares for operational missions, it represents innovation, collaboration, and the enduring human drive to explore the cosmos. The Dream Chaser space plane is a groundbreaking spacecraft that brings new possibilities to space exploration. Imagine it as a small. Reusable plane that can fly into space, deliver supplies, and return to Earth safely. Unlike traditional rockets or capsules that splash into the ocean, Dream Chaser lands on a runway just like an airplane. This makes it much easier and faster to unload important cargo, especially delicate experiments and equipment that scientists need to examine quickly. The spacecraft's design is smart and practical. Small but mighty, able to carry up to twelve thousand pounds of cargo to the International Space Station. That's the weight of two pickup trucks. When it returns, it can safely bring back about four thousand pounds of materials, including fragile scientific samples. This ability to quickly return experiments to Earth is a big deal for researchers who need to analyze data without delays. Dream Chaser's reusability is another game changer. It can be flown up to 15 times, making it a cost-effective option for NASA and other space agencies. Traditional spacecraft are often used only once, which makes space missions expensive. By reusing the same vehicle, Dream Chaser lowers the cost of accessing space while maintaining safety and efficiency. One of the coolest things about Dream Chaser is its versatility. It can take off on different types of rockets and land on runways anywhere in the world, as long as they are long enough. This flexibility means that it can be used for many types of missions, from delivering supplies to the ISS to carrying out experiments in orbit. In the future, it might even carry astronauts or perform military missions. The team behind Dream Chaser, Sierra Space, has big plans. They are already building another version of the spacecraft and exploring ways to use it for different purposes. For example, a version designed for national security missions could support government projects, while a crewed version might one day take astronauts to and from space stations. Dream Chaser's journey to this point is also fascinating. Its design was inspired by a Cold War era Soviet spacecraft that NASA engineers studied and improved upon. This collaboration between past and present technologies shows how innovation builds on previous ideas to create something even better. Looking ahead, Dream Chaser is more than just a spacecraft; it's a symbol of what's possible when humans push the boundaries of exploration. It combines cutting-edge technology with practical solutions to make space missions safer, faster, and more efficient. As it prepares for its first mission, Dream Chaser is not just a part of history. It's paving the way for the future of space travel.